Hello, and welcome to Daily Work Remote Strategies. The reason we do this is because you're likely at home, I'm likely at home, I mean, I am, this is my home, this is my home office, the paintings that I have at home. And we're trying to do a lot of things. We're trying to get things done at work. We're trying to parent, as you'll see this week and next week, have a lot of parenting strategies, parenting while working remote. And we're also trying to become, to grow, both as business people, also personally develop. So the strategy that I want to share with you today is called integrative thinking. And this strategy is specifically to be used in complex sort of weird uncertain times. And the reason I'm presenting it to you is so that you can have some strategies to use for work, for home, when home intersects with work. And I'll give some specific ways of how to do it and something specific about what this strategy is. As always, you can ask me questions in the chat and after the first introduction of the concept, we will be doing all questions, all things where you can dive in and sort of really bite into this concept and see where it inter intersects with what you're doing. Okay, integrative thinking. You may have heard dilemmas such as, this is somebody at work who completely disagrees with me. This is me. We have completely different point of views. We have no way to bridge that gap. We have totally different view points of views on this project or this strategy or this design. That's the crucial and the main thing that we're talking about today. Something where it feels like there's no meeting point. There are two sides and there's no meeting point. Again, it can be a project. It can be anything. Let me give you two more examples before we dive into the strategy. Another example is career. And I'll give you sort of the most, in a sense, cliched example of this, which is that somebody might say in their 20s or in the, their 30s, it's more likely, should I go and do what I love or should I go and get a stable, respectable job where I make a regular good income? And it's not always those polarities. It's not always that you have to, should I go and do what I love or should I go and have a steady, consistent job? So again, another one of these things where it seems like there's one thing or another that are very different. And it can happen with anything. It can happen with whether you feel that you can reach out and ask for help, but you don't know whether you can or you can't. So as we look at a technique to help with this kind of thing, I invite you to think of something where you feel like there are two different things and they're, not, they're just not quite meeting, two opposite points of view. Maybe you have one and a different person has the other perspective, or you have one and you also have the other, so you're fighting within yourself about what's the right thing to do. All right, enter integrative thinking. Let's take one specific example so we're all on the same page. Let's say you believe that work should go a specific way. A specific project should have a very specific direction and somebody completely disagrees with you at work. How can you apply this new strategy? What is integrative thinking and how can you apply it? Integrative thinking is a, ter is a term coined by Roger Martin, and I will be sharing one screenshot of an article that he wrote for HBR. He interviewed a lot of business leaders, I believe about 50 business leaders, very high leaders, CEOs of companies, and he looked for a pattern of thinking or a pattern of decision making, a pattern at looking at issues. And what he, find, what he found is that people, senior, senior people and the C-suite, they tended to not think so much of simple, but tended to think more complex, and they tended to try to integrate those complex thoughts. What does this mean? Every situation that we may face can be phrased as it's A or B. But we could also explore and try to get into the depth of A. What is it? What is it about A? What works? What doesn't work? We could explore and get into the depth of B. And in so doing, Roger Martin suggested that as he's interviewing these CEOs, they are taking the best of A and the best of B, and they're kind of letting it float up here, out here, so that they can integrate those concepts. What does this mean practically? I mean, that sounds very nice at a sort of meta level. Oh, it, it may not be an A or B thinking, but it might be more understanding the two concepts of A or B and trying to find common ground or trying to find something that's a spark that's even better than the best of A and the best of B. What it really is, is a shift from simplifying our thinking to, uh, I'm positive this is not a word, but a shift towards complexifying our, our thinking. Rather than saying, hey, I see these A and B, here's what A is about, here's what B is about, it's about what else? What are the other nuances of A? 
what else, what are the nuances of B? Now you might also think, so I'm kind of giving you my own doubts as I learned about this theory of integrative thinking. You might also think, okay, so let's say I go more complex with A and I go more complex with B. Why would that necessarily lead to me coming to a conclusion that takes the best of A and takes the best of B? Maybe it's just getting more complex in, on A and more complex on B. You might be right. You might be right that as you try, try to go deeper here and deeper here, you actually don't get any kind of overlap or intersection, but you may get that overlap in that intersection. And the reason I'm bringing this up now is we have a lot of things on our plates that are this A or B that are pulling at us in two different directions. It could be like we're talking about this whole week, parenting and working, and really just we're in the same location, we're in the same place. What are those things for you? So I'll take some of your comments and let's see if we can address some of those specific things. So here's Martin, Roger Martin's theory. Yes, you could think in A, A or B, or you could take more complexities. Don't simplify it. Don't look for just the one line simplification of what the position A is, and what position B is. Actually go deeper, talk to people, get more nuance, talk to people and get more nuance on position B, and then let it mull, let it just mull in your head. That's the strategy of integrative thinking. I can also take you through the steps of decision making when you use integrative thinking. But at this point, I just want to pause. So what I've done is I've said, look, rather than going fast or intuitive or just immediately making a decision, you could get a little more complex. Where does this apply to your life? Where does it not apply? I'll pause for a moment and let you put in some comments and then I will share one visual that may help with this description. So I'm going to look at what your comments are right now. Okay, I'm still here, still here. I'm about to share an image with you. Thank you for your patience. I'm just pulling this image up for us. Image. Okay, so here I'm going to check out your comments on these things. Okay, you are, some of you are saying, yes, work and home. That's, that's a polarity where it may help to it develop more integrative thinking. Some of you are saying situations at work, specific situations at work. You're not telling me which ones, but just specific situations. That's where I find this the most useful. All right, two more concepts as we sort of come to a conclusion about this idea of integrative thinking. One is the thinking of opposable thumb, and that's a Roger Martin analogy, the person who originated this theory. And the other is a path of thinking through the process, the overall process. Okay, opposable thumb. I think this is really delightful. So Roger Martin's uh, analogy here is that as animals, just as animals have an opposable thumb, and that's great, and that, that led to a lot of different things that we can do, so too my people, are able to develop their opposable mind. Just like the opposable thumb, people are able to develop their opposable mind so that we don't stay so strictly in one particular position. One other way of thinking about this, and when I've coached CEOs and SVPs on this topic, one of the things that we talk about is surely when we were all in our 20s and likely even in our 30s, it ended up being simple to simplify and to say, oh, I completely believe, agree with A. But now, as we're in our 30s, 40s, 50s, and above, we're actually thinking, what are the, what are the weightings? What are the benefits of both? So we don't tend to reach as much for the simplification, which gives us this ability to potentially synthesize once we open ourselves up to the nuances and the complexity. And here's the visual. So that, that was an idea of opposable thumb and opposable mind. And let me share a visual with you. One moment, I'll be sharing screen. Okay, so this is from the HBR article. This is from the HBR article by Roger Martin. And the article itself, and I'll share a link in the post, is how successful leaders think. And the image, as I am sharing it here, the image that he uses is this one. So I don't know if you can see this really well. I might make it bigger in the full in the full demo afterwards. But the idea is that 
there, you could be a conventional thinker or an integrative thinker. I realize this is a little small and I tried to make it bigger for us. I tried, I really tried to make it bigger for us. A conventional thinker might, might focus only on those features that are relevant. Now look at this integrative thinking. You're looking for those things that are less obvious, but potentially relevant. And once you, I'll stop sharing because it's so small. I'll, I'd rather share the link with you. But once you do that, once you're looking for the things, not only the features that are relevant, but more open, your next stage after determining what's relevant, it's more things are relevant in, in integrative thinking, your next stage is what's the causality? How is this related to what the decision I need to make on product or project? And again, a conventional thinking style would be what, what of A produces more of B, what of B produces more of A, but what if there were multi-directional or non-linear ways that the two parts, the two points of view work together. So that's the next phase. Again, phase one of going through an integrative thinking process. Phase one is what's relevant, what features are relevant. Phase two is what's the causality. And there might be not an A to B or B to A. There might be, they might be a very, there might be more integrated causality. Step three is what is that decision architecture? The, what do I need? How do I need to make that decision? Now, what you and I have tended to do, which is referred to here as conventional thinking, is we've tended to break problems into pieces and work on each problem. Now, I have to say, there's a lot of benefit to this. So what I'm describing, it's not like it doesn't work at all. It works, and it works in a lot of situations. But if you're in a situation in which it doesn't work, then consider the opposite. So again, stage three is what, how do I make this decision? What's my decision architecture? For an integrative thinker, that becomes more where that problem, that A and B, that becomes more of a whole. And how do these parts fit together? And how does a decision about this one potentially affect something about this one? So now you're weighing things even as you're thinking of the decision you're gonna make. And stage four is how do I resolve this? How do I resolve this? It's a point of tension, it's conflict. Again, our conventional thinking style would be, I'm gonna make an either or choice. I'm gonna choose one. That's my role, I'm the senior person, I need to make that decision. And I'm going to choose it out of the best, out of all the options, the best possible. But then this, again, this more, almost in a sense, more relaxed, more holistic integrative thinking would now lead us to say, okay, let's resolve the tensions among these two opposing ideas. And let's think of what's a completely previously unthought of, potentially innovative outcome. So I'll just summarize those four stages again. I'm gonna determine what's relevant about A and B, and there's gonna be more things that are relevant in integrative thinking. I'm going to look at what's, how are they related? Where's the causality? And maybe they're related in uh, what Roger Martin refers to as multi-directional ways. Step three is I'm gonna think about how am I gonna make this decision? Am I going to work on the pieces or am I gonna to try to figure it out how they really continue to be related even as I shift the pieces? And finally, instead of making an either or decision, how can I create some innovative decision? Something that resolves the tensions, but keeps the best parts of both. I hope this is helpful to you, specifically on decisions that you need to make, on things that are in your mind. And I'll give you as an ending example, so a discussion that I had with a colleague recently. This is someone I really admire, someone who, who's in, just an incredible mind in business. And one person, I, I always call my examples uh, Joe, just to not give any more information about the person. One thing Joe was thinking about is what career decision should I make? Should I do more consulting and grow my consulting business? Or should I go more in-house in a company? Now, those are very A or B decisions. Is there a way to integrate them? Is there a way to consult towards the goal of potentially working with that company longer term? Is there a way to work on projects with a company that are a consulta consultative way, but really at the core of what's important to the company? I don't know. And it may be different for Joe than it is for Jane to use two very, very short J names. I welcome you into this kind of thinking. It's messy, it's strange, it might not work the first few times you get, you try it but I will link also to the article so you have some other references and I'll be doing that now. Thank you so much for joining us. This has been Daily Work Remote Strategies. We're here every day at 11 a.m. Pacific for 20 minutes. Tomorrow is Friday. On Fridays, we always have at least a two-person panel, two or three, and it's us coaches answering questions that you have. 
Thank you for being with us. I'm going to stay on while I post the link. So if questions come up, I would be happy to answer them. Thank you. Okay, I am posting links and checking whether you have specific questions for me. You look all set. Thank you. Thank you as well for coming. Thank you for saying that. I'll be posting the links and I will see you again at 11 a.m. Pacific the next day. Thank you. All the best.